Hey guys, and uh, welcome back to uh, another episode of What's Hot and What's Not. Well, this week I think we'll start off with um, salmon. I was out, I uh, only went out once this week. We had those rains earlier in the week and uh, whatnot, so I sort of waited until afterwards and I uh, went out fishing yesterday. Uh, I fished one of my spots for the late fall run. Now, usually, you know, a late fall run, where you want to fish, because those fish are fast moving, so where you want to fish is you want to go to some place where you got two different smells that come together, like Moore's Landing, you got Butte Creek coming in, you got a nice landing, you got a slough right there, you got a Verona with a Feather River flowing in. Now, you come to one of those spots and those fish are moving upstream pretty fast and they'll get to there and they'll see a fork in the road and they'll mill around for a little while until they figure out which way they want to go. So uh, that's where you want to be. Now, where I was yesterday, uh, I'm a little early. It used to be, you know, about 10, 12 years ago. You know, I was always saying uh, you should go out like the 1st of November for uh, the, starting the late fall run. But in the last five, six, eight years, you know, it's been more like uh, the 15th of November. So I thought, you know, I had a birthday a couple days ago. I figured, well, what the heck, you know, let's go out and uh, give her a try and celebrate my birthday. So I went out uh, and and anchored up, and I was kind of surprised at the number of fish that were moving through. I'm not quite sure if they were um, moving to the side with a bright sunny day, moving aside and, and going around me because of my boat, or if uh, I needed to move over more. Uh, kind of was seeing that as the day wore on. Next time I'm going to try moving over a little bit more and see if that was it. But uh, we didn't catch one. But I was really kind of impressed with the number of fish that I marked moving up the river. So I'd say it's time for you guys to go out there and hit your favorite spot, you know, anywhere from, uh, you know, Ward's Landing all the way down in the Sacramento area. You can even troll a little bit, although it'd be pretty tough trolling. But uh, if you went down there and uh, hit one of these areas where, you know, you got uh, another body of water coming in, that's going to be your best bet, and I would work it pretty hard, anchor fishing, uh, use a three-way with a two-foot dropper on it. Uh, tune in next week, and I'll uh, demonstrate one of my uh, rigs that I use and how I tie it, and you, you use that. But I do like a two-foot dropper, about three foot back to the uh, killer fish, uh, but... At least where I was, it seemed like uh, you pretty much were going to have to use some sort of killer fish, quick fish, flat fish sort of thing. Uh, it seemed like the spinners, you know, using uh, silver trons is probably not enough current right now. That river really should be about five feet higher than it is. So with the, the, with the current being down like it is, we'll have to wait for some more rain. Uh, they don't have any forecast in the future now, but it, it only came up a foot from this last rain. So hopefully it'll come up... Uh, We'll get some more rain. It'll come up some more in the future. And then we can use some variety of things. I was just using different colors. But it'd be nice if I could put out some uh, killer fish and some silver trons and different things and uh, see what they want that particular day. But I I think the late fall run is going to be the shining spot in the salmon season for this year. Now, uh, as far as Collins Lake... Uh, I gave them a call and I found out they have planted uh, 200 pounds of the lightning trout along with their regular green trout. They're planting about 1,000 to 2,000 pounds of the, of the regular trout each week, um, depending on what they bring them. But those 200 pounds of lightning trout, I'm kind of impressed with that. They said they're going to do another plant with them, you know, uh, at 200 pounds or, or whatever they can get, probably right after Thanksgiving. So you might want to write that on your calendar to go up there and give that a try. And if you're interested in booking a trip to go up there and try it right after Thanksgiving, um, give me a call. We'll get up there and see what we can do. So anyways, uh, talking along those lines, uh, I seen uh, Alan posted a video with uh, talking about, you know, line curl and, and spooning and the problems with your line curling. Now, I kind of put my little take on it and I did a little piece uh, well here it is why don't you watch it okay gang I heard Alan Fong talking about a uh, line twist and uh, when you should put new line on stuff I'd like to chime in to here a little bit um, no disrespect to Alan but I've got a few things I wanted to say um, 
when you've got line twists like this, you know, it's twisted really bad. Now the first thing I want to say is if you're going to put new line on, I was always taught when I was working in a bait shop to always uh, load it with a line on the top. You never want to load it with a line on the bottom because they said it'll twist it. So that's one thing right there. You can keep twist out by always making it feed off the spool from the top. Now one cure for uh, coils on your line like this is to uh, place it under hot water. I've seen that, I don't remember if it was Roland Martin or uh, Bill Dance or one of those guys, but uh, they said you put it under hot water, it will take the coils out of it. Now you really do want to get the coils out of it because if you look, you can see each time it goes around, the light hits it in one spot, that'll reflect, and it'll reflect in the water that way, you know. Um, every time it goes around, the fish will see that, that light on there. So you wanna get that off of there. You don't want the coils in there. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this and go run it under some hot water. But before I go run under the hot water, I got one more thing I wanna talk about. I'm gonna turn this upside down so that it will be easier to work with. When you're running your line out, when you're reeling your line in, a lot of people, especially novice fishermen, as your line comes in here, see how it, see how it twists with the spool? Now, If you've got a fish and you're pulling real hard or something, now see how the spool's turning with the line? Every time that goes around there, that's putting a twist in the line. So you wanna be sure and not do that when you're fishing. You know, uh, best thing I always tell my clients is, watch into your rod, it'll tell you what you need to know. And you need to keep, with a spinning reel, you need to keep one eye on the spool. Make sure the spool is not turning so uh, you're not getting line twists that way. And it'll twist up bad. So now I'm gonna put it under some water and I'll show you that trick. Okay gang, now you wanna turn the hot water on. Let it run until it gets good and hot. Or as hot as it'll get, you know, coming out of your faucet. Now when I saw this, they actually did is they boiled some water on the stove and uh, placed it in the boiling hot water. But I found out that the tap water, hot tap water works pretty well. So, let me think until that gets hot. Okay, it's getting pretty hot now. So what you want to do is just run your line, pull under here for about a minute, just like that. They said you could use the hot water stuff, pour the water on your stove, I mean. That works pretty well. I <laughs> fogged up my land. Run it in there for about a minute. So we will stop here and, and pick it up afterwards. Okay, now let me dry it a bit. Okay, let's see how we did. Pull it out there, see it's pretty limp. Not really any coils, I'm sure there's gonna be some coils in there, but does a pretty good job, I think. It's just an alternative to buy a new line all the time. Just uh, running under hot water, and uh, there you go, sports fans. Well, there you go, guys. Uh, you don't necessarily have to run right out and buy you some new line right away. Uh, there's different ways to deal with uh, coiling of your line, and uh, I hope you enjoyed that section. And I would like to uh, appeal to you guys to subscribe. I need subscribers. I need people that like my videos and to hit the bell for each week. Uh, when a video comes out, you'll get notified. So uh, keep it up. Get out there. Get after that late fall run. The run's not very big, but the fish are. So uh, they're a lot of fun. They're full of fight. The river was down to 54 degrees this week. So... Uh, Get out there and get after them and good fishing.